Hello and welcome to the Greek for the week. We are in Luke now. And so since I did um, Luke 1, uh, 1 to uh, 38 for my uh, podcast today, let's do a verse from there, a very famous verse, especially for Roman Catholics, uh, Luke 1, 28. All right. Kai a um, Some manuscripts have ho angelos, pros autain. So this is and having entered in, the angel uh, Apen said to her. So Aselthon is a participle. Um, Elf um, is not a movie about um, someone from the North Pole, but it is the aorist of Urkamai. So this this word is ace Urkamai, to go into or to enter. Um, It is aorist. And it's a participle. This is the nominative masculine singular participle, ending the very first luon, the very first participle form you learn. Um, So it is an aorist active participle, nominative masculine singular from a circumai. So with an aorist participle, my starter translation is having done something. And since the word means to enter, having entered and having entered. Now you could use uh, a after he entered or when he entered, if you want to get a little bit more fancy, maybe you want to be on a translation committee uh, for some version of the Bible. But, you know, for beginning Greek, we could say, and having entered, he said to her, apen, it's aping an aorist. Now, this is the aorist of Lego. Um, New with an epsilon in front of it is very often a movable new. Throw it away. Um, And so epsilon is a very common third person singular active, past tense, indicative ending. Uh, so those that epsilon right there tells you a whole lot. So this is Aristak indicative third singular from Lego. He, she or it said, but it's referring to the angel. And having entered to her, he said, here's what the angel said, Kyra, kekara tomene ho karos metasu. Um, hello. Um, Kyrie means, um, literally, it means rejoice, uh, but um, it's a greeting. Um, Hail, Mary. Um, So greetings, and it's a, this is a, um, um, it's an imperative, believe it or not. Epsilon in this context, so this is a different context. Here is a second person singular imperative. Hey, you, be happy. Um, Command isn't really a command. It's a it's a hello or rejoice. Um, aren't you glad to see me? We don't want to read into it. It's basically hello, greetings. And then he addresses her. This is vocative because he's speaking to her as one who has been favored. Um, this is a lot of letters. It is. But the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So, for example, I notice men hiding in the middle there. Not men at the end, but men in the middle. Um, so. This is men at work. So men in the middle is a participle. Men are passive participle. Uh, so the, the bin is from the passiveness of this participle. Um, the word is uh, karato'o. Um, so um, the ending has been shoved right on the stem. Where does that happen? It happens in the perfect middle or passive. So the perfect is where the having comes from, having been. Um, and the perfect means, and and you still are. So greetings, one who has been favored and still is favored. Um, the Ada tells me that it's a feminine singular. And I think, uh, you know, whether you want to call it feminine non- nominative singular or vocative, he's addressing her. Uh, hey, you be happy, you person who's been favored you. Um, now, the perfect has reduplication on the front. You may notice, well, why didn't it reduplicate with a with another key. So reduplication is where this letter gets a little beside itself and you put an epsilon in the middle. However, um, when you go uh, into second semester Greek, um, which is usually where the perfect tense is introduced, you learn that when the breathy consonants, there are three breathy consonants, phi and uh, theta and chi, um, these are breathy. They probably weren't even pronounced that way. It's probably more of a, a uh, k and uh, p. Uh, I'm, I'm over exaggerating it. Um, but these breathy consonants duplicate with their unbreathy equivalent. 
So k is in the palatal region. And so the unvoiced k is the way it reduplicates. So ki reduplicates with a kappa. Theta reduplicates with a tau. And phi reduplicates with a p. So that is normal, completely normal, completely regular reduplication. Um, and so we're left with um, having, because it's perfect, been, because it's passive, and then favored or graced, charis, see it in the middle there, uh, having been favored one. Now, um, it doesn't say uh, greetings, woman who has been highly favored. So this is kind of kind of substantive. We have to come up with the substance. I put one in brackets. Greetings, one who has been uh, highly favored and still is. Um, the word for grace, you God has shown grace upon you. Mary didn't earn becoming the Virgin Mary. Uh, she did merit. There, there were aspects of her righteousness that merited it. Um, now, here's where we might get into some debates with our Roman Catholic friends about whether she was immaculately conceived. Um, um, I don't find any biblical indication that she was biblically conceived, but I mean, uh, uh, immaculately conceived without sin, that is. But anyway, I'm not, I don't want to fight over it, but I think probably others may want to fight with me over it. Um, this is not a major uh, um, fighting point for me as a Protestant. It is a fighting point for, uh, I think, some others. But anyway, greetings or hail one who has been highly favored. Uh, ho, ho kurios metasu, the Lord is with you. All right, uh, we have to stick the is in there. Now, this is where um, the, the manuscripts that are considered most likely uh, stop there. Uh, however, um, I think somebody got upset with me on YouTube today uh, for suggesting that um, blessed are you among women, women might not have been in the original of Luke. Um, man, people... You know, I, at some point, I you know I had my I had my share of faith crises, um, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go with what seems to be true because that's what God thinks. God thinks that which is true, and so if the evidence seems to point in a particular direction, I I need to have a really good reason not to go in that direction, and so at some point, I I, I line, aligned my submission to truth with my submission to God. And, and I don't have a dog in this race. So I, I'm perfectly okay with, with coming to the conclusion that the verse originally said, blessed are you among women. Um, however, if that's not what the most likely reading of the evidence is, then I'm not going to get too bent out of shape of it because the truth is what God thinks. Anyway, uh, side, side philosophy lecture there. But there are some manuscripts that have eulogemene uh, uh, su en uh, gunaik sin. Okay, en gunaik sin is among women. En can mean many things. In, among, by, with, um, among works well here. Gunaik sin is the dative plural of women. Gynecologist, you can see G-Y-N there in the uh, beginning of it. Women, wives. Um, you is emphatic, not always necessary. So it kind of says, you, come on down. Blessed are you. Uh, the R is implied. Now, blessed, here we have the men again. Men are passive participles. You legeo, uh, so the ending is shoved right on the stem. So it is per perfect. Um, the, we can't see the reduplication because this is weird. It already has an epsilon on the front. Vowels don't reduplicate normally. Um, it's already kind of long, diphthongs are long, you. So anyway, just trust me, it's perfect passive participle, uh, nominative masculine singular. So the having comes from the perfect, the ben comes from the passive, and blessed comes from the word. Eulog a eulogy is a blessing of somebody who's died. So um, the whole verse, if, it, if this was original, says, and having entered, uh, he said uh, to her, Greetings, one who has been highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Now, the, the manuscript evidence isn't um, crystal clear. Let me say, I'm looking at um, the manuscript evidence here. So there, there are some pretty good witnesses uh, for blessed are you among women. Um, 
uh, Alexandrinus from the 500s. Uh, Codex Biza, the Western, Western text is fairly old. Um, uh, however, 33 is a good minuscule manuscript. Uh, we've got some good um, uh, Latin manuscripts. The Diatessaron is from the late 100s. That's pretty good, although it's, a, it's, it's not strictly a manuscript. Well, um, but the, the reading, the, the manuscripts that don't have this blessed are, are you among women include um, two of the favorites, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Um, uh, and, and I'll just stop, stop there. Um, there is a, a rule that is sometimes invoked in textual studies uh, called uh, choose the Lectio Brevior, which means the shorter reading is more likely correct. This is not an absolute by any means, but it basically suggests that most of the time when copiers did something, they were more likely to add than to take away. And so we asked the common sense question, why would anyone take this out? I can't think of why anybody would take it out, not intentionally. Um, is there an accidental way it could have fallen out? Well, I'm not really immediately at least thinking of any reason why it would have accidentally uh, fallen out. And so on balance, they give it a B reading, uh, which means we're more certain than, than not that, that this was not original on the basis of one, um, the manuscript evidence leans a little bit toward it not being there. And then the, the common sense question suggests that it's more likely that it would have been added than taken out. And so probably this wasn't in the, uh, the original. That's from a standpoint of trying to be objective and trying to come up with a conclusion that's true rather than using my a bias, a bias, you know, say, well, I want it to be in there because I say the Hail Mary or, you know, I, I say this, and so I want it to be original. Well, it doesn't matter what we want, right? I can want to be able to fly. Um, that when, on the playing field of truth, what's, what matters is really evidence. So um, there, I've offended more people, but this has been Luke 128 in Greek.